I guarantee you that at some point, everything's gonna go south on you. Ready? And you're gonna say, this is it. Watch out! This is how I end. Commander, Mark is dead. We have to go now. Thank you for talking to me today, Dr. Green. Um, you gave us a great speech about uh, NASA's road to Mars and how mm -hmm. long it's been in the making. Realistically, how close are we to having a manned mission to Mars? Well, you know, the book is set in the mid-2030s. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, that's fairly real, 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 realistic. We're developing the capabilities and the systems. We certainly have in-depth knowledge about this planet from a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'd say in the 2030s and the tw in early 2040s, we could actually have humans standing on Mars. Now you can either accept that, <laughs> or you can get to work. This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates, and to NASA, and to the entire world. But I'm still alive. Surprise. The, the, the humor and the, and the way that I think us kind of mere mortals are always captivated by the way people can do this and seem to have some preternatural calm when they're in these incredibly high stress situations. And, and, and that was what was really attractive about the character, how he kept his sense of humor. It seems like Watney had a lot of... <laughs> He's definitely a nerd. I love that he was t thinking about Aquaman and talking mm -hmm. about how he played D&D when he was in high school. And then hearing you talk, it seems like he might have your sense of humor. So who is Watney? Watney's based on my personality. He's mm -hmm. definitely based on me. Um, he has all the qualities about myself that I like and none of the qualities that I don't like. So, you know, I've got, my, I've got parts of myself that I don't like and, and he doesn't have them. He's an idealized version of me. So I gotta make water and grow food on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can't figure out a way to make contact with NASA, then none of this matters anyway. We've got an incoming message. Mein Gott. <laughs> Mark Watney is still alive. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. You think of the planet, uh, Mars itself, as being the antagonist of the novel? Well, in a way. It's a, it's a man versus nature story, so mm -hmm. definitely, like, if if man versus nature stories have an antagonist, it's nature. And so Mars, physics, and just the, the realities of the universe we live in are the antagonist. But I love man versus nature because it, it's, it, everybody's on the same side. Mm -hmm. There's no divided loyalties. You don't kind of secretly root for the antagonist. Nobody roots for nature to win. I know how to save Mark Watney. But we need the Hermes crew. We either have a high chance of killing one or a low chance of killing six. I'm not risking their lives. It's bigger than one person. No. So. Pretty famous, famously created a program to help you calculate trajectory uh, from Earth to Mars and a few other things uh, when writing The Martian. Uh, how important is it, was it to you to get it scientifically accurate? It was really important to me because um, I have this core group of uh, nerdy readers. Well, mm -hmm. at the time I started, I, I had about 3,000 regular readers mm -hmm. at my site, and they were all like scientifically minded people. That means nerds, and um, they. Uh, you got to get they, it right with nerds. I know, and, <laughs> and they are nitpicky, and I know because I am one, and so I'm super picky when I'm reading sci-fi, and so I, I expect um, other nerds to be mm -hmm. as well. So it was really important to me to to get this science accurate. You know, Drew Goddard, who who adapted uh, the screenplay, um, when I sat and talked with him, it was the first thing he said. He said, "This is a. I, I want this to be a love letter to science." <laughs> And, um, and I thought, and, and we had a long conversation about that and how that's a really wonderful thing to put out uh, into the world right now. And, and, and yeah, I hope, I, you know, I, I don't have, you know, any lofty expectations, but I do hope that some, some kids see it and get and, 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 and geek out on the science and enjoy it. And, 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 and maybe, maybe it's one thing in, in many other things in their life that might push them in that direction. What I really enjoyed about the book and the movie is how close to reality it can be. It's just around the corner for us. What is the role of, well, science fiction and science seem to go hand in hand. How do you work from a very realistic point of view influencing um, Fiction. Well, you know, really, a science fiction is part of our culture. It's, it, it's really ingrained in what we do. When we use it, it, in many ways, it gives us a glimpse into the future. Mm -hmm. And if it's a good glimpse, it's something we want to aspire to. And that's tremendously motivating. 
tell my family that I never stopped fighting to make